YouTube family, what is going on? Yo, welcome back to the video, man. Hopefully y'all can hear me. The wind is going kind of crazy right now. Um, you know, we are at my favorite little little spot here for pictures, videos, and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, so yeah, so this is what we got going on. You know, in my last video, uh, I went kind of hard on Dodge and all that. I talked about a lot of things that I felt like they did wrong on this car. So, uh, and, I, and I said, I, I like the car, I love the car. There was some things I feel like they can improve. So this is the video where I talk about the things that I do like about this car. So yeah, it's not all hate, like with anything. You like a lot of things, but some things has, you know, some opportunities with them. So we're gonna get into things that they did right with this car. And um, let's get into the little bit of a list I got going on here before I jump into that. Um, right now, I think we're just under 400 subscribers. So I wanna appreciate everyone. Uh, that has subscribed to the channel uh that's checking me out and, and supporting the whole uh thing i got going on because there's a there's a thousands of people right now on youtube doing car videos and you could be you could be anywhere in the world but you're here with me right so i appreciate the support and if this video if, if we have uh 400 by the time this video drops thanks everyone the same way thank everybody for the support man uh you know i'm gonna keep going keep doing this and uh keep making this thing um push up and all that so yeah let's Cut to what we're going to talk about. Try not to hold you too long and you know, all that. So uh, let's go. All right. So the first thing I want to get into what they got right with this car. And this is one of those things that can go either way. That can either be bad or good. It's bad from a performance standpoint, but from a practicality standpoint, this is actually pretty good. So one thing I talked about in my last video, I put the link up here somewhere that on the last video, I mentioned that this car is, it weighs, it, it weighs, it's heavy. It weighs a lot compared to the other cars in the, in the, uh, in, in its class this car weighs the most by far it, it weighs just as much as some four-door sedans but with that weight you do get size and with that size that means that you can be comfortable inside the car front or back seats um and also you have space in the trunk to put things in there so like like i was mentioning in my last video let's hop in here real quick make sure you are subscribed to the channel of course and move some of my stuff over here all right so boom so boom so i'm in the front seat right and like I said, last week, I'm like six foot one, but I'm in the front seat. I got space. Like I'm, my legs are fully stretched out in this thing. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not cramped anything. I'm, I'm spacious. I'm good. Um, I'm comfortable. I can sit here. I, if we go on a road trip somewhere, I can, I'll be fine. I'm good. I can, I can sit here. I'm comfortable the whole time. I'm not, uh, thinking I need like, um, like some time to get out the car or anything like that. I, I can sit here almost all day. Right. And I'm good. I don't feel cramped or, or anything of that nature. Now let's turn our attention to the back here. So of course, if you're in the back, let me do one thing here. So if you if you have someone in the back with any two door car, of course you're not going to have the back the back seat space of a four door car. But but compared to other cars in this class, like the Camaros and the Mustangs, those back seats are pretty much non-existent. So let me scoot this up a little bit. So even if I scoot this seat up a little bit, I still my my legs are still stretched out. I'm good. I have space. But if I put someone in the back seat here, like in case you're one of those people that didn't call shotgun. So now you're back here in the back. So I'm about six foot one. And see, I put myself back here. Well, so if I move the seat, I can move the seat up and around and stuff. So if I put the seat about right here, let's say I put the seat about right there. So I'm pretty comfortable. I grant I got this, this this seat back here, but uh, but right now I'm, I'm pretty I'm pretty good. Uh, I can I can do this if I needed to. I don't want to. So if I needed to, I could. I'm not gonna be in the back seat of my own car though. So let's go to the trunk um, and show you some things there as well. All right, so we're back to the trunk of the car. Um, another thing with this car, the trunk space is tremendous. It's great. Um, I came from a Ford car. I had I actually had an awesome before I had this car, and the trunk space in this car is pretty much comparable to a Ford or sedan. Um, I've I've checked out the trunk space on like Mustangs, Camaros, things of that nature, and those trunks are pretty small the opening of the trunk is really small it's hard to get stuff in here but in here you have space to put a lot of stuff uh, and i have put a lot of stuff in the trunk of this car before like if you're going on a trip you could put a couple of bags in here travel bags uh large two cases things like that could fit back here no problem and you're good the car's still functional uh that's one thing i feel like is a good part of this car that stands it out from the rest that this car even though it's a two-door car it does have functional space all right so we're going to get into the inside of the car here so this is an obvious one that i like about this car and there's some other cars that will fall in this, into this category as well the one thing that i still like about this car and other cars like this that they still offer this car with the standard manual transmission and when i mean manual transmission i don't mean like the whole i can it's automatic but let me flip it over like a shift pat like do powder shifting that 
those cars are great cool and all that nothing against that but i feel like hitting the clutch pulling get rolling through the gear stuff like that is it adds a different dynamic to the drive the driving experience of the car so i'm happy they still offer this with a manual uh grand no mustang still come with manuals camaros and some other cars out there like hondas uh still come with manuals so thankfully this is one of those cars that comes with a manual as well so um a lot of cars I know are going to like do a clutch transmissions and automatics only just because there's not a lot of people that can drive manuals, but still having a manual option in this car, love it, thank you. Another thing, probably the last thing I might add on to this list here of things that Dodge got right for this car. And this is the most obvious thing. This is something I hear a lot of people say, but I want to mention it as well. It's something that I like about this car. It's the fact that they stay very, very true to the retro styling of the original Challengers on a modern day car. They could have easily went to a route of trying to make it a sports, more of a sports car than a muscle car, but they said, no, we're gonna stay true to our roots and make this a modern day muscle car. And if and if you're familiar with Challengers, you kind of know the body lines and things like that. But for those that are not as familiar with the older model Challengers, I could point out a couple things that this car has on it that is pretty much the same as the, the 70s model Challengers. Uh, we're not gonna speak on the 80 model Challengers because we don't claim those at all, period. So we're just gonna, we're not gonna, no we don't do that around here so a uh, couple things like if you know the 2014 and below challengers those were modeled after the 1970 challengers and those challengers one of the some of the styling features on that was the lights that go all the way across on the back and on the front you had the real big headlights on the front now this car itself is modeled after the 1971 challenger and i can cue up some stuff on this one so uh, i don't know if you see my tail lights hopefully you can but the 1972, not 71, not 72, 71, 71 is where this one is modeled after. That was the first year they offered the split tail light design, which they offered in this car. Um, that's different from the 2014 and below challengers. Now, if you take a walk around, here's some other body lines here. If you notice this part right here, we can see this line here and it goes, swoops up and comes there. That is pretty much identical to the older, uh, to the 70 models cars where they have that exact same body line. Um, on theirs as well. So let's go around to the front here. We're gonna look here. On the front, the headlight design and the split grill, definitely a throwback to the old 70s model, especially in the 71. In the 71, they did have this split grill. I don't know if you can see it, mine's blacked out, but it's a split grill there that is pretty much exactly what the 71s had. Uh, the 70s had the bigger style grill, which is like I said, the 2014s and below had that style grill in it. And also the hood, you can see you got the dual snorkel, kind of design with it which is a staple of what these cars have and it is a true throwback to exactly what those cars had before so one thing about these gauges that some people may notice or may not notice is uh they put a little bit of retro touch into these gauges as well one thing with doing the kind of the big tachometer here and the speedometer here to make it look retro but if you take a closer look at the numbers on each one notice how the numbers on the gate sort of radiate out from the center a lot of the gauges, the numbers are perpendicular all the way around. So you can see, read the numbers all the way around the speedometer. But on these gauges, they kept the numbers radiating around. A lot of cars from the seventies had the numbers kind of like this. And this to me stood out. One of the first things that I noticed when I got in the car, I couldn't quite put my finger on it at first, but after thinking about it more and more, then I noticed, okay, this is where this number style kind of came from with the numbers radiating around the whole speedometer and tachometer. So that's another uh, kind of throwback knot, uh, kind of retro styling they put into these cars. The gauges here in the middle, the one you can change, even that one's kind of is styled the same way with the numbers that it goes that radiate around from the center. So hats off the dodge for doing that and keeping true to the whole muscle car feel. So that's gonna wrap up today's video, man. Hope everyone enjoyed the video. Comment down below what retro aspect of this car that you like, what what thing that draws you towards the Challenger versus other cars, man. And appreciate everyone's support so far. We're gonna keep this thing going. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment to the channel, man. We're gonna keep the content coming. That's all we got today. See you in the next one. We out of here.